Look at how beautiful this is. My gosh, this is a beautiful, beautiful plant. I'm really, really in love. Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you the care and propagation of the Lea amabilis. This is a plant that is close to my heart. I think it looks really gorgeous and I've featured it a few times on this channel. I was really in love with it when I discovered it. They do have these beautiful leaves and the underside is also very dark, almost like a dark maroon. There's a really, really elegant stripe down the middle of the leaf with just a little bit of a red down the middle. So it's just really, really gorgeous. And when they put out the new leaves, it came out like a trilobe, like a raptor's claw. And then they expand in size to become this. Now this plant is endemic to Borneo and parts of Malaysia. They're actually deep understory plants. So they like, I would say, anywhere from medium to bright indirect light, although I would not give it any direct sunlight as they can burn quite easily. And if you give them too bright of a light, the foliage doesn't become as dark and gorgeous as this. They kind of become a little bit bleached. And if you keep them in lower light, their internals can become quite long in between and the leaves will be quite small. Now this particular specimen in my hand is considered small. I've seen some really nice big ones and the leaves can get like pretty big and fat but you do need very ideal conditions for that, which I don't. This one has suffered a bit in my move, but it's been doing okay. So this is not the hardest plant to care for. And in terms of watering, these guys do droop when they need water. So that might be a little bit too far gone. So do not water your plants each time they droop. You should kind of predict beforehand. You should kind of experience beforehand and try to water them before they droop and you will find your frequency based on your living conditions the potting media that it's living in but this is i would say a very thirsty plant it does feed on quite a bit of water i have to water this almost like every day but lightly so i have also overwatered this at some point and one of the signs is that a lot of the lower leaves would shed and turn yellow very quickly if you overwater this plant but it does forgive you so this is not the easiest plant in terms of watering you do need to be more advanced in your plant care skills but once you get the hang of it, they're actually quite okay. Now they love humidity. In my climate, that it's 60 to 80%. So they look so they actually do fine whether they're in my indoor space or outdoor here. So if you live in a lower humidity area, you might find this plant to be on a struggle bus. But give it a shot and do comment down below if you've managed to keep this plant thriving or alive under 50% humidity and below. I'm curious to know. Now this plant actually do put out this white water droplet type dews under the leaves and that can easily be mistaken for pests but I found that those are actually not pests. So don't freak out if you find those around your underside of the plants. And this is not a particularly pest prone plant. I really do pest control the same way I do with my other house plants which is like every one or two months. So this is not a particularly pest prone plant. I've not had any pest issues with this one. And I do fertilize this lightly but frequently with both uh, granular slow release fertilizer, also foliar spray and some chemical fertilizer. There's some worm casting in my potting media as well that they take in, but everything in small, small amounts. These are not high nutrient feeding plants, so do not over fertilize. The delicate leaves I can feel would probably burn easily if you have too much uh, pesticide or fertilizer and things like that. Other than that, this has been a joy to care for and Unfortunately, I'm going to be propagating this specimen because I really need to figure out how to multiply this. I want a whole bush of them. And I also want to try to figure out how I can even get this to become bigger and fatter than before. This has sort of been chucked in the corner and a little bit forgotten over the past year or so. And I, it's time for me to let it shine, give it more care and show the world how to care for and propagate this plant because there's not many plant care tips online for this plant. And I have a feeling this might be a new house plant that is going to be trending. And of course, some of these plants were brought in from the forest maybe a few years ago and over the generations they're propagated and they're acclimatized to our living conditions. So I would say over time, maybe this plant will be able to tolerate lower and lower humidity and easier, easier care over time. So this is how a lot of the deep forest plants become house plants over the period of many years. Let's just get started with this propagation. I'm very excited. I've been putting off this episode for a long time. All right, so here's the plant up close. I actually looked at the price earlier on to see what it's worth now, and it's actually very, very inexpensive here in Indonesia. Uh, maybe because it's so fast growing and I've been seeing nurseries grow this out and so happy to see that it's affordable now. So if we mess up this experiment, I'll be able to replace it rather easily. But as you can see here, this was actually one vine growing up and something happened. I can't remember what. 
that came off and then it branched out two branches from the side so hopefully when we make the cut today this will actually branch out even more because this is what plants do when you cut off the top it'll grow a few a uh, few branches below all right the first thing that we're gonna do is to cut it but i'm going to leave some of the leaves up here there you go i'm gonna leave that bit for this vine and there's a new vine here that's just coming out uh this is so that this a uh, particular vine down here can still photosynthesis, can photosynthesize, I mean, and then it can still put out vines from underneath. If I cut it bare, it's possible as well. If I cut it like really low down here, it's possible that it might put out a new vine, but it is a bit risky and I'm very afraid to lose this plant. Look at how beautiful this is. My gosh, this is a beautiful, beautiful plant. I'm really, really in love. And I'm really thinking about doing an episode for plants with fantastic foliage. Spoiler alert, this will be in it if I ever do that episode. Cut it off. And there you go. This is the parent plant that we have to work with. So wish me luck on this. I hope that this will grow into something. And I do need to back off with watering. It is a bit dripping with water now. But uh, yeah, back off with watering for this because it's lost many leaves. And I can squeeze this around to see to give it some air. So yeah, as for the top cuttings here, let me see. Oh, this is very, very close internodes. It's a little bit scary in my opinion, but I might cut it right around. Yeah, this is so close. Cut it around here. Yeah, this is actually very short. I hope, I wish I had more stem here to work with, but I'm going to be plotting this in water. Let it root in water. This is actually a little bit too much water. I usually like to use a smaller vessel, but I'm kind of running out of smaller vessels. And then for the other cutting, I'll do the same. This one has a better top cutting, a better length, as you can see here. Cut this. I'm a lot more comfortable with this cutting here. Now, some people say just stick it in moss. It's possible as well. But in my case, I really wanted to try water propagation from for this plant. No one's really done a video on how to propagate these. So maybe I can give you better options of how to propagate yours in case you are looking into it. But I hope that this plant becomes more available in your area soon. It is stunning, stunning, stunning plant. And for the rest, I'm gonna do single node cuttings. As usual, I'm very greedy. I'm gonna take, take that, and then I'm gonna take that off. So this is one cutting for me. As you can see, it's got one main stem here. I'm going by instinct here, by the way, uh, because a lot of plants are propagated this way. I'm assuming this plant will respond to the same propagation methods. So let's see. Now for good measure, I might actually just stick another one of these in water just to see how it'll do. And for the rest of them, how beautiful this is looking. This will even make a nice table decoration. For the rest of them, I'm actually going to be planting it in moss. So I've got some moss over here. I should have like wet the moss, squeezed it out, but I didn't. So sue me. <laughs> so I'm just gonna stick it there. And for this plant, I will not let it callous or dry off or anything because this is so fast to wilt. I think this will need a lot of water really quickly. It's a thirsty plant normally. So I would not leave it in dry conditions for too long. It will just wilt and the cutting would be rendered useless if it's wilted. I might actually do three cuttings in this and then I will do two, but I want to kind of pamper the other two. I want to propagate it in a propagation bin. I just wanted to see the difference in results. So with this, I want to water it gently, immediately. And I'm going to leave this out in the open. Now, these last two cuttings, I'm going to be putting it inside a propagation box. So we have a few options to work with here. We've got two in propagation box, two living. I'm going to give it more water outside in regular air. This is in water propagation. And finally, we've got the parent plant back here. Wish me luck and I'll see you guys in a few months. It's been about four weeks. Let's start with the bad news first. This one crisp up. So I guess this is a plant that really might do better in a water propagation or in like a humidity dome setting. Let me try to, try to pull it out. I see a tiny bit of root here. Yeah, it's putting out, it put out a bit of root. 
which is good but I don't see any growth coming out of this probably not a good idea to disturb it this is such a fragile plant but yeah it's losing a lot of moisture from the leaves and then this one is also producing a bit of a root already down below as you can see tiny tiny amount of root but I don't see any growth point yet so I'm gonna stick this back in there and hope for the best technically speaking I should move this into a closed humidity setup but I'm just gonna leave it at that just to see what happens moving on up this is the water propagate so it's getting very good light here so let me take out the cuttings one by one to study them yeah this one's put out a root which is good and a new little baby leaf so hands down these guys do water propagate better but the jury is still not on whether this will acclimatize well into soil or not i'm gonna wait for secondary roots to come out because this is still the, f the first root to come out which is not very efficient at pulling up nutrients from soil and then let me take out another cutting Ugh, it's like kind of fighting in there this one is doing okay i don't see any roots here but i see little tiny tiny things that might be roots i'm not sure and it's put out a new leaf as you can see down the the down the bottom there but the leaves are also suffering it looks like they do lose a lot of moisture from the air so this is a bit more humidity loving than i previously thought but also they actually do fine when they have roots and when you water them frequently they're okay but when you cut off the roots like this they really really have no meaningful way of bringing up moisture to the leaves so they lose the leaves like crazy last cutting again lost the leaves i may chop the leaves off and then it's put out a little baby leaf here oh my god this is so cute this is very very adorable one of the most adorable plants that i've ever propagated yeah excited for this to happen and meanwhile i think it is time to change the water just so you know throughout this whole time i have not changed the water at all i've kept it at this level so yeah don't change your water too often plants do release their natural rooting hormone in there if you change your water often you're washing away the, the stuff that they need now let's look at the one that's in uh, the propagation box so i keep this like a little bit moist and whenever i open the box i can feel a rush of humidity come out and let's study oh the leaves are in pristine conditions they're as good as new and you know what there it's really really well rooted into this media so definitely hands down for these guys you need to propagate them in in that but i am worried about something that maybe the new leaf that came out might have been a bit suffocated by that so i'm going to unpot this real quick yeah, so I see some really, really healthy roots. It actually was a bit hard to take out. I hope I did not knock off any baby leaves in there. I really hope I didn't. So I'm gonna bury it gently back in and maybe start adding a bit of nutrients because this is ready for some nutrients. And finally, this is the parent plant. So we have a new vine here. I don't know if this was there before, but this has put out a new little amazing vine with a little leaf coming off the side this has activated some of the growth nodes here as well we need to take off some of these drying old leaves i have not done that yet but a new growth point is happening here a new growth and there as well on the top as you can see so we made we made a cut over here let me come around focus focus yeah we made the cut right in the center of the screen and i see one two only two i see two new vines starting to emerge welcome to a three weeks update this is the final update this is the one that was grown in the propagation box over there where it's getting actually very little light look at how dark the leaves are so this has put out a baby and a new baby is coming along the way let me see if i can show you that that that's a new growth point so this i might actually keep in its moss uh, I'm going to be traveling for the next few months, so I guess I'm going to just continue keeping it in here But then later on when I come back from traveling I'm gonna to have to start putting it in like a glass jar like this and then opening it up little by little because I don't want it to suffer Any kind of stress. So yeah for now. This is going back into the prop box Welcome to a three months update. I have sad sad news. I lost every single one of them except this one This is my last remaining so a few months ago, I did notice that they started crisping up, but I kind of ignored them. 
and then they completely dried off. So they have been a little bit too neglected. And over here, I noticed some of these other forest plants have wilted a bit, but when I water them, they actually perk back up, such as this one here, because they are maybe larger, a little bit more established, so they can perk up. So I did travel a lot uh, over a few months, and uh, yeah, I cannot blame the people who are caring for this plant because they didn't know any better, but these are, you cannot let these dry out for too much. And we've been getting very hot spells here in my garden. And in fact, I even installed a paranet all the way up there. Do you see that? I installed that recently because it did get a little bit too hot and everything was drying up too quickly. Some of the plants on the higher balcony were getting a little bit bleach by the bright light. So yeah, what a bummer. But uh, because this is such a failed experiment, I'm going to reward you with a, a bonus content. This uh, Leah. Zippeliana, which is a distant relative. I'm going to show you exactly how I divided this into two plants. All right, so this is the plant and I just wanted to show you up close how beautiful the leaves are. But also, as you can see here, this vine is coming down. I'm going to take some of the dead leaves off. And then there's some new vines coming up from over here. This branching out. So what I'm going to do is very simple. I prepared another potting mix. This is forest floor potting mix. And I'm guessing this is the right potting media for this plant because it's, it is a forest dwelling plant. And I'm just going to tuck this into the next pot. And I do want to make sure to inform my caretaker that this is the arrangement for this plant for now. And I'm going to let this one plant root into this pot before I cut it off. So yeah, that's very simple. And I'm going to give you guys a few months update. I'm going to be watering this very lightly. I don't want this to be wet. I don't want to rot that stem in there and keep it lightly moist just to let it root into it and hopefully it'll take off. So I'll see you guys in a few months. All right, it's time to check on this plant after four weeks. Now this is rooted. It's rooted in there. Uh, I see that it's not coming off easily but I think it has come undone a bit so let me give this pot a bit of height let me see if I can do this with one hand because I think this pot is not high enough so let me do that and then see if I can dip this deeper in there and bury it a bit because the idea is to let it like root a lot more than this so I guess I didn't check on this enough but yeah that stem there needs to be under a bit of soil and down below here let me see this has put out a new vine over here this is completely new and yeah there's two vines living in this one pot now and this one is probably going to be my future main plant right here and this one the secondary plant so this is doing okay but I did notice that when as I was watering this plant that it is quite thirsty it does drink up quite a lot of water especially in this terracotta pot and my very airy forest floor potting mix media but this is actually doing well and I will give you give it a few more months and then I will try to separate these this from the, that one plant here is a three weeks update this stem here somehow got compromised on its own I don't know what happened there let me cut it off so now these are two separate plants living on their own now I'm really curious to see if this one here has rooted at all. So I'm gonna slowly take it out. I have a feeling it has some kind of root system because it's, yeah, it does. Okay, excited to see this. Look at that. So remember this was just laying on the next pot over and it's put out the root that is so robust. Look at that, and this is gonna become its own plant. Now I should probably cut it right around here and then I should, I'm going to sterilize with a bit of activated charcoal. So yeah, this is going to be a whole new plant, but I think this is actually very wet. I got to be very, a bit more careful because I don't want this to be overwatered. I have a feeling this has been a little bit overwatered before. So keeping a mental note. There you go, new plant. And let's see, over here, I think I'm getting yeah, I'm getting two separate vines out of this. Welcome to a two months update. These guys are doing really well. Now they do droop quite a bit and I water them and then they perk right back up, which is going to suggest that they're actually very thirsty plants. And look at the crisping edges on these leaves. That's from underwatering. So the caretaker may have missed watering at some point, uh, but yeah, I cannot control that unfortunately. But these guys, again, they do not want to dry out completely, but 
in my experience, when I had them overwatered in a more dense potting media, they do shed their leaves, they do rot quite easily as well. So balance is the key for these guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. Feel free to DM with any questions regarding plant care and propagations. See you in the next one. Bye. Thank you, Patreon members, for supporting the channel. Should you consider joining as a member, the Patreon link is Sean from Only Plants. It can also be found in this video description. I've started producing bonus contents for members. These include plant hauls, plant shopping, and mini bite-sized adventures. The same bonus contents will also be unlocked for you if you join to become a YouTube member of the channel. There is a monthly membership fee as small as a cup of coffee a month. Simply go to Only Plants channel page and click join. Your contributions help me grow the channel, do better content, and have a better quality of life. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart.